your conversation. I just wanted to let you know. <laughs> and we welcome our Facebook uh, congregation uh, as we move in. Uh, we've been talking about the availability of the uh, vaccine. Uh, so uh, if that continues on, then uh, that's great. Um, and again, uh, I was just going to go ahead. I was just going to say, we discovered that Ingalls is going to be giving the vaccine. <clears throat> okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We signed up yesterday at the pharmacy and you go oh. online and I was able to um, get in on a waiting list really quickly. Okay. And those are all good options for people to know about. I uh, do want to share with you, last Sunday we prayed for uh, Pastor Dave Brighton uh, down at uh, Warner Robins. Some of you remember him because he was here a couple of years ago and met with the leadership, with the church council and the uh, elders. He's our first vice president. He did pass away uh, from COVID. Uh, oh, well. it, 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 hap it happened within a week. Um <laughs> It just uh, it attacked his uh, vital organs and shut them all down. Wow. The one thing I did hear, the one thing I did hear, because again he was he w he's younger than I am. He's he's about two years younger than me. Um, wow. And very fit, very healthy. But what I learned was just a few months ago he had a slight heart attack, and they don't know if that maybe maybe that was the weakness that uh, allowed. The cracks to open. Um, Can I give give a good report? My niece is doing very well. They fused the two three to the skull, and when the doctor later in the day, when the doctor talked to my my niece and her and my sister, uh, they said they didn't know how she could have been holding her head up because her mm. ligaments were so stretched. Okay. Well. Wow. Okay. So finding the problem and finding somebody to do that was a miracle yep and keeping keeping denise in our thoughts and prayers as she uh that's why gene is going to be virtual next uh, ex especially virtual next week <laughs> yeah, I'll be from yeah. Yeah, right right uh because denise denise will have been through her surgery right it's thursday correct it's Thursday. We don't know what time yet. We originally were told at 5.30 that she had to be there at 5.30 in the morning. But they now say they will let us know on Wednesday what time she actually has to be there Thursday. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, Gene, uh, where, is she, where is the surgery going to be taking place? At the Emory Back and Joint Clinic, or Back and Joint Hospital, which is kind of on the edge of the, as best I can tell from Google Earth, uh, kind of on the edge of the Emory Hospital campus. Okay. But it's a relatively new facility. Uh, and we've got, I mean, her doctor has a great reputation, so so we feel good about it. And there are lots of people praying for her. Thank you all. Yep. I saw Richard and Rita Robinson yesterday. They're doing well. Uh, when they were down in when they were down in Florida, he fell out of the bed, but nothing nothing broke. He fell on the same side that his surgery was on. So again, there were some apprehensive moments with that. And uh, just want to let you know, you, uh, you can see David and Linda who have been with us quite a few times. Uh, they they have uh, gotten COVID. Uh, so they are not feeling well. So we want to keep them in our prayers uh, throughout I this. That, I understand that David is it's actually hitting David harder than that. It it is, and that's that's unbelievable <laughs> considering all the health issues that Linda has. You would you would think it would be the other way around. Uh, so again, we want to keep them in our prayers as as again uh, we experience this. Oh, and by the way, I saw Barbara Lang. She came through the office on, do you remember what day it was, Luann? Tuesday? Wednesday? I don't know. Wednesday, I think, yeah. Well, she stopped and talked. She was picking some stuff up. She stopped and talked. Um, COVID ended up being a, bless, a blessing for David. Uh, yes, it, it hit him hard, and he, he was touch and go. But they did find that he had a uh, small mass. I think it was on his pancreas, and now now they are going to remove it. They they caught it early, um, but they they would not have found it if he had not been in the hospital for COVID. 
Um, the Lord works in mysterious ways. It, it do, he does. There's something stuck behind me there. Did you say that Sosinski's had COVID? Sosinski's had co- have COVID, yes. They have it. Not they have it. They have it. They have it. They are in the midst of it. Are they home or in the hospital? They're, they're at home. They're at home. Da- David is suffering worse from it than Linda is. Um, so just continue to keep them in your prayers and um, as we continue to move forward. Um, anything else we anything else we need to catch up on, Gene? Well, just as a side note, uh, as to what's going on with COVID, and what impact it's having. I'm I'm uh, on the executive committee of a group that trains all the Rotary presidents in the state of Georgia, and we were scheduled to have a. Uh, a live gathering for training at the Renaissance Hotel in Atlanta at the end of February. And as of this week, even though the hotel has not yet agreed to let us out of our contract, we have decided that we're going to do that virtual. We just cannot bring ourselves to bring 150 people together uh, in a situation that we're not comfortable that they can... Right that they can social distance and be protected. And, 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 and the danger in that situation is people are coming from so many varied places and situations. All over the state. All you know, over the state. And, that, and that's what makes, that's what amplifies um, the situation. Um, so again, as we... Anyway, we go ahead. decided to bite the bullet and even you know, and risk being sued by the hotel if they decide right. to do that now. Now, if we get sued, we're going to accept the suit with WSB cameras uh, when we accept it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and that's we're we're still riding that wave, and uh, again, everything is always um, you got to be flexible. You got to be ready, and that's the way the church has got has got to uh, uh, move during this time is flexibility and and realizing we're we're. We've got to be able to shift and um, move, and uh, someday we'll finally get back to what will be whatever is the new design. It, it will be a new design, believe you me. Uh, and we're working on some of that, and I'll share toward the end. Um, the books have come in. The study guides have come in for the next uh, book study that we're doing, the one that's coordinated with Lent. Uh, so uh, I, I will ask some questions at the end in regards to, for some of you uh, how to get the books in your hands. Ted, I've got your address, so I will be mailing those out to you. Uh, but then for others of you that don't, you know, regularly come I'll to... i up, of course. Well, I, I figure I'm, I've got them there for Sunday, so if anybody's there on Sunday, I, w- I will be giving them out. But I... What, $10 a piece? They are ten dollars a piece, or fifteen for two. Okay. Okay. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks again as we uh, uh, connect with one another. We catch up on uh, our lives, but also uh, as we share in that, we we know we uh, share both the joys and the burdens, uh, and and we we just pray that as we do that as a congregation. You enable us to uh, experience your hand at work, uh, that we can see your awesomeness uh, throughout all these proceedings. Heavenly Father, we just pray for your guidance, your protection, your provision uh, in all that we say and do. We pray this all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's very fitting. Go ahead, Lisa. Just before you get started, I wanted to um, relate a little a little funny aha. Yesterday afternoon, late yesterday afternoon, when Ralph and I were coming back from Towns County getting his shot, we go the back way. So I, I guess that's Crooked Creek Road where the um, detention center is. Okay. So right after I made that left-hand turn on that road, there was a little Toyota Corolla in front of me going 22 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> last, last week's and, lesson. And, and there is nowhere to pass on Crooked Creek Road. Nowhere. And the thing that came out of my mouth before I could even stop myself was, I know where I'm going, even if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought, oh, Lisa, we just talked about 
about this? Gosh. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa, there are so many layers to that. Yeah, it, 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 it could it could be in the earthly manner, or it could be in the spiritual manner. Exactly. <laughs> oh, well, and and uh, again, as as we started today, catching up on where people are, who to pray for, uh, the needs. I think it's especially fitting for the chapter. Um, Amen. Uh, it's it's about calling a friend, you know that that person that person you have in your life that um, you know you can reach out to uh, no matter the circumstance. You know I, I I think I think doing these Zoom things. Um, uh, some of you are in our Monday group, Monday night group. I know with our Monday night group, you I I'm sensing a, a closer knit. Uh, with with the people in that group, just like with this group, we're, we're developing a closer knit in, in 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 our relationship with one another, and not that it's going to be the the person you you call you know with with no matter the circumstance, but I think w- within these groups that we are uh, that are happening, and I pray that that's going to happen during the Lenten season, that we can see that there's a a. Uh, a greater sense of community that I I can share things with these people and know that I'm not going to be attacked. I, I, look at the world we're living in right now, where where people share things and and if you if you don't share it the way they think it should be, it's it's immediately attacked. It's immediately attacked. Um, and sad to say, some of that is coming in the church. Um, so, how many of you have a go-to person or persons? Good, good. Um, and, and you know that that's very important. And, and granted, for for some of us, it could be our spouse. Um, I I know if I didn't have Sally, I don't know how I'd make it through ministry. Uh, I lean on her a lot, uh, so she she has been she has been very instrumental. Well, and she as many of you know the story, she was an instrumental in me going to the seminary. Uh, if it wasn't for her, I never would have been a pastor. Um, so so in some way, in some cases, she's now paying the price for it. But um, but I but she she from day one, she and I have been ministry partners. Um, since we got married, uh, and I thank God for that that partnership. Uh, but again, uh, some of you some of you are in varying degrees of of sharing in in my life. Um, some 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 hear more than others. Um, some are forced to hear more than others because they're captive <laughs> for several hours a day. Luann. <laughs> She's your office wife. Oh. She she's a good she, she lets me vent she lets me vent and then she kicks me in the rear end um sometimes so, sometimes with the sometimes with the roll of her eyes sometimes sometimes with uh, a comment that she uh, sends to me says to me uh that's what and that's really where she started this chapter. That's what you need in that kind of person. That's what you need in that kind of friend. It's not a yes person. You don't you don't oh everything's going to be all right. You don't need somebody to just placate you. You need somebody yes that will encourage you, support you, uplift you, but you also need somebody who's going to kick you in the rear end and, and, and wake you up. Um and and that and that that's really the true sign of a, a, a developing an open relationship uh, where, where those uh, people do that. You know, as she said in the book, it's it's the one it's the person one with and to whom you can spill your struggles, worries, failures, and doubts. But it's also the one uh, which will celebrate the hopes, the joys, the successes, and finally, it's the one that you can share life together. Um, the ups and the downs, the joys and the sorrows. Um, so, um, so we call a friend. Interesting what she 
what she equated it to be in our sense of liturgy. Did you catch? Did, what what part of our worship? Say it again, Lisa. The call and response. Yeah. Psalms, the back and forth. The, the, the back and forth readings, uh, which we do. And uh, Luann does a great job of looking for those. You know, because again, we, we don't always, they the resource that she has doesn't always have good ones. Um, right? <laughs> there's the roll of the eyes, gang. If you just caught Luann, there's the roll of the eyes. That's what I get. Uh, <laughs> uh but but when there is a good one, Luann makes sure that it's in there. Now, when we do when we do those responsive readings, how is the, how is it like that relationship with a friend? And and I str I, I struggled with the I really struggled with this. I, I was trying to, I was trying to see how does this connect. To where she's where she went in this chapter, you know how she started. I think she made it. Go ahead, Jane. I think she made it pretty clear to begin with how it connects. In that, you know, she has moved moved away. I have one one of my go-to people lives out of town, uh, and we see each other actually maybe a couple times a year. Okay. But we call, and if the other one's not there, we leave a message. I tell him why I'm calling. You know, if I've got something that I really just need to get off my chest, I'll leave that message like she did. And then he'll call back. If he doesn't get me, he'll give a response. But he, he's, he's like my other go-to person. There's no, uh, 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 you know, there, there's no, oh, you're, oh, you're fine. You you did that just right. Kind of it's an honest relationship. In fact, I was thinking about that as I, as she went on to start talking about church, because <clears throat> when I when I first got to be friends with this guy, one of the things he made clear to me is he did not want to talk about religion. Uh, his brother uh, was was very active, and I was very active. And he said, I've told my brother this, and I'm telling you this, I don't want to hear about it. And now, one of the things that we talk about a lot is theology. Okay. Because he's a Stevens minister, he's very active in his church, he's uh, very active helping others. Uh, and while we don't always a agree on theology, sometimes... When I listen to him, I find out he's more right than I am and, and the other way around. And so anyway, that's it. So I felt that that's connected really well. Okay. Anybody else? How did you see the connection with where she was going with the whole idea of the responsive readings that we have and the response? Of, and, and it's also the prayers, the responsive prayers that we have. Ted, I saw your hand. Yeah, um, I was just going to share a lot of times that those special relationships could be relationships from years past too. Um, one of the, when Diane was principal in the large Catholic school in, in uh, Noka, Minnesota, um, we used to meet with small groups of the Catholic uh, families or teachers and uh, read the gospel and share it. And uh, one of those couples, um, they've been down to our cabin a couple times. Um, they're dear friends. And uh, again, even though that took place, it would have been in the uh, 80s, we still have that tie. We still have that, um, you know, we don't talk every week, but, but again, uh, that that is still there um, you know I did start um, the experiencing God this week with a group and um, uh, we're breaking up into small sections after the initial start and uh, one of the the individuals that's in my group that I'm leading uh, was a man that I used to uh, reunion with 
on a weekly basis. Uh, 15 years? No, it would have been more than that. Yeah, well, about 15 years ago. But I moved away from where he was. So, you know, even though more, it doesn't mean that we have to always be in our community. It can be, um, you know, in, in the past, reach out to people in the past, too. Right. And I think that's one thing that this is, has really enabled us to do is, is um, look back at um, the special relationships we had, which is really important. And there's something that she mentioned. There's something she mentioned later on that I'm going to try to connect with that, Ted. Hopefully, I'll remember it when when I get to that point. But there's something in the notes that really connects with that. Anybody else? Where where do you see the connection with the responsive readings? You st- you still haven't hit mine. Go ahead, Ted. One of the things that I wish she would have focused on a little bit more is the Holy Spirit. And um, I truly believe that as we meditate on Scripture, the Holy Spirit is, you know, the Holy Spirit hears our suffering even before we yeah. burst it out. You know, the Holy Spirit uh, in response of readings. Again, uh, the Psalms were written as inspired words of God. You know, the Holy Spirit is active through that whole right. process, I think. And I wish you would focus a little bit more on that. Well, and I, and I think this is, this is where I'm coming from. This is why she probably didn't. And, and really, the thing I want to point out is, and again, two things. Number one... Um, and this came up, um, I forget what, what it was, but this came up recently where I think it was Luann I shared with that there, there was a responsive reading in the congregation. I don't know if it was last Sunday or the Sunday before. And, I, you know, I spoke my part and then the response came back. It was sort of like, Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. There was no emotion to the response, you know. So Ted, that that might be where we need to um, have that consideration of the power of the Holy Spirit in this. Uh, the other the other thing, and this is really where I came from with the responsive readings. Do you do you ever notice m- my position with these different readings? Not the prayers. But with with the like the opening sentences, Luann thinks we need to have closing sentences if we have opening sentences. But 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 if you notice, my position is not always the same with the opening sentences. Sometimes I'm turned out to the congregation. Sometimes I'm turned toward the cross in those. And and if you if you ever pay attention, if if we're speaking about the Lord and what the Lord is doing, I'm facing the cross. I'm joining you. I'm part of you guys. Um, but 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 when it's words being shared by God to you guys, uh, then like a blessing or a Thanksgiving or something like that, uh, then I'm facing I'm facing out to you guys. I, I'm I'm. At that point, I'm I'm being God's spokesman. I'm being God's mouthpiece to give you the words. But then, when we're praising the Lord in what we're saying, I'm joining you guys. And and I think this is really that sense. I think where she was going with that relation. We've got to realize the the friendship relationship first. And and we've talked about this. The friendship relationship first is vertical. You know, God and us. You know, but then because of this vertical relationship, then it needs to be horizontal. And and so when we do the prayers, when we do the prayers, I'm speaking as a lone voice, and then the congregation joins behind. And and it's in that sort of give and take between God and congregation, God and congregation. 
um, in, in doing that. And I, I, so I think we first have to remember, and remember, these words that we speak, especially in those opening sentences, Luann, typically, where do they come from? They come from Scripture. The, they're just a repetition of the Scripture for the day. Uh, when we do a psalm, when I'm preaching on a psalm, she'll throw the psalm in, and we'll do the responsive reading of the psalm. So, so many times when we're doing the responsive sentences, they they are God's words anyway, and and, and we we are in this partnership, we are in this friendship with God, where where He knows us, and we are seeking to know Him. But it's also in that sense of we need to be community joined together in one voice. Now, here comes the difficulty when we do responsive readings. Are we always together in one voice? <laughs> Barely. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's in sync. Boom. Sometimes it's like you, you can hear the patter uh, just break, break down. Sometimes it's labored. Yes, yes. A a any other? <laughs> hold it, hold it. Luann and then Jean. If it's really, really long, deciding where to breathe as a congregation is a very difficult thing. Because some of us have better breath control than others. So, yes. Jean, what were you going to say? I uh, said, so you're getting technical here. You know, we can be in one voice even though we're out of sync in how we do it. But I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna, I'm driving a point, and the point comes at the very end. The point comes at the very end, and and, and you're right. But but I, I, the point really comes is, um, yes, we can be in one voice. But how many times as being in, because again, who's, go back again, whose words are these that we're speaking? Uh, yeah. But are there sometimes when even with God's words, we're out of sync? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know we're out of key sometimes. <laughs> oh, being acquired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and and I think I think that sort of and Jean, it really emphasizes what you were saying with your your relationship with your friend. You know, there, there's sometimes when you have it and he doesn't. There's sometimes when he has it and you don't. That that's that's sort of that out of syncness. But the beauty of it is is we're striving we're striving to speak and live out the same words. Um, and no matter how, how frail and failed what we do is, the realization is, are we still in one voice? That's what, that's what the, and, and that's where she goes. That's what the church is to be about. You know, it, it, it's, it's, uh, she said, it's the talking to and with God together, uh, in the same words, in agreement, God and us, uh, but it's not only to speak the good news, but to become the good news for one another. Look at the way we started today. Look at, I, I didn't even take a look at the time, how many minutes we, we talked about our life together. So it wasn't just about speaking the good news, which is what we're doing now, but it's about becoming the good news for one another. Uh, to be that responsive reading, that give and take, that voice and, and call back, that call and response. Um, and as she called it, it's a rhythm of good friendship. It's a rhythm of life together. It's a rhythm of the community of saints. And sometimes we're experiencing it. Sometimes the rhythm of the community of saints gets interrupted. And it gets a little out of sync. Um, so, sometimes it's, it's dealing with the things of this world. Sometimes it's dealing with the, the, the sinner saints that are sitting in the pews. And she goes there. Um, she Very goes, much. she goes there. And that, and that's, and that's, Jean, that's why I said I wanted to be particular about that, that responsive reading because we're dealing with sinner saints in the pews. 
So, so sometimes, sometimes that call and response is really in sync. Sometimes it's, yeah. And Luann, you're right. The long, the longer the reading, <laughs> the greater the chance for it to fall apart. And and but again, at the end of the day, is God glorified and is God worshipped? Because it gets it gets back it gets back to what Ted is saying is really it's the Holy Spirit that is guiding us together. Um, now some and and this is where she went. Sometimes where it goes off track is people coming into worship and thinking, okay, Pastor, serve my needs. And sometimes it's the people coming into worship and going, you know what? I like being with these people because they all think like me and speak like me and act, act like me and look like me. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and she really brought a point, those two points out. You know, the whole idea of the Lone Ranger Christian one, just wanting to be served. Uh, the other thing is in regards to, you know, uh, as long as long as as long as I'm in a group that we just get along swimmingly, um, I'm okay with that. And it, and I don't know if you caught it on my notes. I tried I tried to do a um, an emoji that I typed out. If if you got my notes underneath the purpose of the church, I said uh, the purpose of the church question mark. To serve individual spiritual needs with like-minded people of shared values, and you see the emoji at the end. It, it's it's it, a, it, it's upside down. I mean, it's sideways. It's side <laughs> right. That's the way you do it. It's sideways. It's, my head. it's a guy winking. It, it it's a guy winking with his mouth wide open. Yeah. In other words, don't take that comment seriously, because that's not the purpose of the church. The purpose of the church is not to serve the in individual spiritual needs with like-minded people of shared values. And Ted, this is this is your comment from before, where you said your your partnership with somebody from 15 years ago. When we join together in those responsive readings, when we join together in responsive prayers, and especially when we get into the uh, the liturgy for the service of the sacrament. We join together with thousands of years of Christians. And especially when we lead the prayer that leads into the Sanctus. We join with all the angels, the heavenly hosts, and, and all the saints. I forget how it all words, but it talks about the saints that have gone before. We, we join with all of them, praising God and singing... Luann likes it when because the liturgy says saying, but we're always singing it. So Luann, Luann made that change to say, Pastor, just say singing because we're singing this. <laughs> we're singing with the angels. We're singing with the saints. And, and, and really, that's what... So, so whatever we do, for example, you know, I've, I'm long gone from St. Michael Lutheran Church in Fort Myers. I'm long gone from St. Paul Lutheran Church in Lakeland. I'm long gone from Timothy and Woodstock. Um, it's almost been 20 years since I left there. But on Sunday morning, when we're, when we're doing our liturgy together, guess what they're doing? They're doing their liturgy together. And even though it might not sync up with the same liturgy, we are, we are, we are doing this call and response together. Uh, so we're joining with Christians uh, for thousands of years. The problem is, is we get wrapped up into the ritual. A a and when we get wrapped up into the ritual, do we, we, do we really consider what we are doing? It's like the Lord's Prayer. You know, you said this a dozen times at least, that you try to slow it down because uh, so you get some meaning out of it. It's, it's just not a matter of rope type thing. That right. You just 
is saying. You want to think about what you're saying, and uh, and I think that's probably I think that's where you're going with this right now. That uh, uh, and and so and I'm probably guilty of that too. Right. You know, you you do the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed or or the Lord's Prayer or something that we do all the time. It just gets to be words, right? And that really thinking right. about words. Go ahead, Jane. Why? Why? Why what? Why does it get to be rude? <laughs> I don't know. We're the rest of that fast slow, it's not rude. Pardon me? I said, whether I said say it fast or slow, it's not rude. Because all of those are part of a prayer to me. Okay. Lisa, you were going to say something? Well, I think that... I mean, Gene just 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 um, muted what I was going to say. Go ahead and say I it. Think that, I think that at, hello, this is me. <laughs> <laughs> I think that at times it is for we all respond um, as if it we're just reciting and not worshiping we should be worshiping but i think that there are times when we all are just reciting i agree and i think the difference is whether you are actually worshiping whether you um have emptied yourself when you come in um whether you have asked the holy spirit to come feel you and fill f-i-l-l -L. <laughs> i got that <laughs> amen sister well, well and then, you have to do those things before you start. You can't just walk in and sit down and watch a play. Right. Well, and this this gets back again to what Ted was going. And, and yeah, maybe she could have included more of the spirit in that in, in her conversation with this. And and and, and yes, uh, Mel did pick up on part of the point. Part of the point. Yeah. And I and I will tell you. I, I'm just as guilty as others. Uh, I will tell you, Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve was a little, little difficult to be in that sense of worship because there was, there was something else going in my head. And those of you who were here probably know what else was going in my head. You were constantly looking out the window at the snowfall. I wasn't looking out the window. I knew it was happening. Yeah. But I was very conscious of we, we, we've got to get out of here. Yeah. Um. And, and, and so I'm just as guilty of doing those things. And yes, there are some t Mel, you're right. I try to slow down the Lord's Prayer, but sometimes I don't. Uh, and, and, and it's just... And, and, and Gene, it, I don't think it's in the sense of um, the contemplation part. I think it's in the sense of um, trying not to rush worship. And, 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 and I, I will say, uh, I think from day one, from day one here at All Saints, because usually it's, it's the elders I go to for, for the, you know, to lean on for what, how we're doing worship and what we're doing worship. I, the elders from day one have backed me. Pastor, worship is worship. If it takes an hour, if it takes an hour and a half, don't, don't shortchange worship. Uh, Luann and I had a discussion. By the way, how many of you loved her, her prelude on Sunday? Do you remember her pray? I do. What, what, what was it to the tune of, Luann? A prelude was not to the tune of anything. It was speak, it was oh Lord. But, 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 it's, it, but, but that was the underlying tone, was speak, oh Lord. Yes. The hymn was the hymn. The underlying hymn was "Speak, O Lord." Um, yes. And she came to me and she goes, "Pastor, it's four minutes long. It's four minutes long. People are going to get antsy because they're they're going to they're going to see you standing up at the altar, and and, and they're gonna they're gonna want to get going with worship." I and Luann, I and she knows I told her this, Luann. I said. You play it. If they get antsy, they get antsy. We do worship. I wasn't, 
I, I didn't get antsy, but I wondered if you were. Oh, no. And then I saw, I saw you bow your head, and I thought, oh, well, he's just taking, he's going to take this extra time to, to pray a little longer. That's, that's kind of how I took it. I thought it was beautiful. I, I was enjoying it, especially when she, got, when she got to the crescendo. Oh, man. I, 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 I was just, you know, it was, I want, I wanted to be Pentecostal in the moment. <laughs> you know, I wanted to be Pentecostal in the moment. Yeah. I, I mean, that crescendo. And, and like I told her, I said, typically with those, you get to that crescendo and then you sort of close it off. But there, it, it, it just, it was like water falling down a, a mountain and, and going, mm-hmm. flowing back into the stream. Yeah, it, it was. It, but you it, don't usually get that in a prayer. Right, Be- and the reason why is because you know too often they're abbreviated, and that's why I said play the whole thing, play the whole thing. Let again, it's worship. Should we shortchange worship? No, Be- because it's it's in this it's in this vertical relationship, but also we've got in that we. We've also got to have this horizontal relationship going on. Ted, go ahead. I think one of the things we struggle with is, I know Cordell University did a study on how many decisions we make a day. And uh, they said it's, uh, according to their study, 35,000. Now, those are small decisions, just things that happen. When we go in, and Lisa kind of commented on this, the problem is we're, we're leaving our world and going into church. But our world is still constantly pulling with decisions or time, or are we really there um, mentally? Um, and I think that's where we, we struggle. I can remember going to uh, Presidio retreat, and uh, you disconnect everything, so you're you're only focusing on God and, and serving in the chapel and praying for three days. You know, you get to the point where you're you can feel a peace, and really you're starting to disconnect from the world. And all the pulling, and I think that's some of the things we struggle with. Even you know, we might be in the service, but have we really disconnected ourselves and really focusing hundred percent on where we're at? One of the things that I really appreciate in the church is when you go into the sanctuary and it's quiet. For me, it helps me to disconnect. And sometimes I've been in other churches where you walk in the sanctuary and it's just like everybody's talking and gabbing and shaking hands and greeting each other. And I'm thinking, could we not do that in the narthex? Um, That's just me personally. I like it when you can go in right before worship and just disconnect and say a quiet prayer and still your mind and your thoughts before the worship begins. And I'm going to play Lisa here. (laughs) Um, be careful because, because here, here's where the rub comes. Remember I said there's two relations with, with this whole response, call and response. There's two relationships. There's a vertical, but there's a horizontal and, and, and be careful about disconnecting from the world because when you come into that sanctuary, you really have to connect with your fellow parishioners, yeah. It, yeah I, it, 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 because because it's that sense of the body. We can't lose that sense of the body of Christ. That's why the the re, I know where she's going with this responsive reading. We we come together in one voice as the body of Christ, and so when we come into that sanctuary, yes, we we want to disconnect from the garbage of the world. But at the same time, guess what? We we've got people who are coming in with 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 the the gunk on their shoes, so to speak. Uh-huh. And, and and sometimes we do we truly know the struggle? And and that's that was the beauty of the way we started today 
when we come when we come into worship, do we always know the struggles of the people? <laughs> it's hard to say this in in our current state that you're sitting next to. <laughs> Because, no. because we're distantly seating now, it doesn't come across. But are, are there people that we're worshiping with that we really aren't connected to the struggles that they're ha- and, and I think that's where she she she's goes with this is you know um, page one twenty three in the book. You can see where I'm at on the on the outline. I'm I'm down to wondering where else to go. But if, if you go to 123 in the book, the indented section, and then just below that uh, where, is where my notes pick up. But before Christians can say things about what the church ought to be, their first need is to say what the church is. Here and now, amid its own failures and the questionings of the bewildered, looking at it now, with its inconsistencies and perversions and its want of perfection, we must ask what is the real meaning of it just as it is. As the eye gazes upon it, it sees the passion of Jesus, but the eye of faith sees further. It sees the power of the Almighty God. And so here here we come into the, the sanctuary and we see people in the struggles of life. We see a church that is struggling. I, as I've said from the pulpit, as I've said from, from standing, I'm a human being. I'm a human being. If I haven't failed you yet, give me a while. Because as a pastor, I, there will be times I will fail you. Because the church is not perfect. The, the church is feel, filled with sinners. It's, deal, it's filled with imperfect people. It's people who are in that struggle of life. But ultimately in the end, and this is the beauty of seeing that call and response, be, the beauty, even, even if it's a little fractured, our voice, it's still under one voice because it's the body of Christ. And so we see the darkness and the ugliness in one another but it's the darkness and ugliness for which Christ died. But also when we see one another, we see the hope. We see the hope that is there because we, when we look at one another, we see, we see sinners forgiven by Jesus. As, as we come together, we come together unified only because we're unified in Christ. Go ahead, Ted. The... I think we need to separate out the time we're in church worshiping from the other interactions we have with each other as Christians. We are a Christian family, but I still think when we're in worshiping, um, you know, there needs to be a disconnect from uh, so we can focus on on God. Um, now, I completely understand exactly where you're going with your other point and where she was talking about here. When, when I was um, um, involved with, a, in fact, I was president of the congregation, and we're doing a, hundred, a centennial review in the 70s. This was a Missouri Union congregation that had started in, uh, you know, the 1870s. And we're looking back at the history. So we're reading in the, uh, through all the minutes. And one of the minutes in the 1800s, the end of the minutes of the council meeting, or the church meeting was, the meeting ended when the fight broke out. <laughs> Literally. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And, in the council meeting? <laughs> Yeah, this was, yes, the church, you know, the, yep, that's what it, <laughs> that's what was in the minute. And it was realization, we are human. Right. And some of the things that happen, um, even in the church, are not things we're proud of. But, um, said that. pardon? 
I said, she said that. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, that's exactly what, uh, you know, and our history is not because we're human. And, 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 not- and my sermon on Sunday will speak to that point. Well, and, and I think that becomes the realization is, and, and again, we've got to be careful of, of set, because again, church does that. We, we, and I think that was in a previous chapter. We want to separate secular, um, from sacred. And, and we can't do that. Um, we live in this world, but not of this world. And, and, and we know, and we know that's, that's the divine struggle. That, that was the, and again, you know, she talks about the body of Christ. We're joined to the body of Christ. There's two meanings there. When we come and worship, we're joined to the body of Christ. The one, the one who died, the one who was crucified, the one who resurrected, the one who ascended and now sits at the right hand of God. We're joined to that body. We're joined to the body of Christ. Any, anything good in me is beca- because of Christ. But we're also joined to the body of Christ. My brothers and sisters that I'm uh, together with right here. My brothers and sisters that I'm connected with on Sunday morning, whether in person or on Facebook. Uh, And as I said, my brothers and sisters throughout the world, well, throughout Blairsville, because we have other other churches in Blairsville, we're we're connecting with them on that day. And, And also throughout... And, and and we've got to be careful we don't lose sight of that. Um, but again, and, and Ted, this is where I, I think where your point needs needs to really em- be uh, emphasized is if you if you lose sight of point one, the body of Christ, you're not you're not going to see point two, the body of Christ. And she made the point, until you see it personally for you, that I'm a sinner, I'm in need of a Savior, and yes, he has, he has forgiven me of my sins. I need to see that first to enable me to have my eyes open, to enable me to be humble enough to go, you know what? And that's the problem, that's the problem with our world today. It, you know, too many people think that it's, their opinion is the truth. Their truth is what you need to believe in. And if you don't come on my side, then I'm going to tear you down. Mm-hmm. Have, have we been dealing that with that, especially over the last week? Mm-hmm. And, 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 and it infiltrates the church. And, and so really, it's, it's, it's seeing... First of all, the body of Christ, so that we become the body of Christ. And oh yeah, what's the best? What's the best example of that? There, there is an example in worship where we see both the body of Christ and the body of Christ. Communion. 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 Communion is the perfect example of both of those actions. The body of Christ and the body of Christ being lived out. And again, look at... And, and by the way, notice, notice which part of liturgy we have not shortened in this time of shortening worship. Is is the you know again the people the people virtually you don't see that because we do it in person but you saw it at, at Christmas and on New Year's Eve, uh, but we don't shorten the service of the sacrament. That liturgy remains in its fullness because of that sense of body of Christ, because all that liturgy points out the body of Christ, but it reminds us as we speak those words together of the body of Christ. And so we know that we have been reconciled so that we need to carry that reconciliation among one another. And that's where she gets toward the end of the chapter. Uh, I'm, I'm moving down to the bottom of the page. 
uh, the last two lines. The church, the church is worked out in the hard pews of, per, of a particular local congregation. Uh, she, she relates a story on 124 and 125. And that's when things get mo more difficult and more interesting because people like Rebecca sit near me in church. People who know me, who get me, who I trust and laugh with as we gather in small group over the study of scripture and a plate of spaghetti. But there are other people around me in the pews. People I find irritating and awkward. People who vehemently hold political opinions I find suspect. People with whom I have nothing in common outside of our shared membership in this community of the saints. Some of those I practice, some of those I practice call and response with each week would not be people I'd ever want to go with on a long road trip. The body of Christ is made of all kinds of people, some of whom I find obnoxious, arrogant, self-righteous, or misguided. Charges I'm sure others have rightly applied to me. <laughs> Isn't that so true? Isn't that so? Tr that 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 is really then, you know, that's seeing the body of Christ. You know, it, it's it's, and and the reality of it is when we instead of instead of when we look at one another in the congregation as being the warts on the body of Christ, maybe we should see each other as being the wounds on the body of Christ. The Lutheran pastor that I worked for several years ago reminded us that the, and you've all maybe heard this before, that the church is not a heaven for saints, but a hospital for sinners. Yeah. Yes. And I said, Amen. you know, just like me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, too many, too many times those of us there want to think of it as a country club. We're not a country club. We're a hospital. Right. Exactly. Right. I've never heard it. I've never heard it that way, but it's a it's a very good point. Right. Well, and and, and hospital for sinners. Well, and and sometimes, and sometimes we are called to be the nurses to provide the care. Sometimes we need the nurses. Yeah. yeah. Right. Correct. But sometimes, sometimes people in that local community are called to be the nurses to provide the care. Yeah. And that, and that's what I'm saying is not to lose sight that people come in with with the mud on their shoes, the ones that need to be attended to that day, and and some of us are the ones that are are placed there for that day to do the attending to, um, in in the body of Christ. And and so there, and that's really where I I gathered the sense of where she was going with the call and response is yes sometimes our responses break down and they're not quite in unison, but we're still speaking in one mind and it's the mind of Christ. Um, so uh, as you see down at the bottom, I I have the note uh, we're known, loved, and served in a gritty, messy, painful reality of the local context. Uh, that describes All Saints Lutheran Church. Um, if it doesn't, then I, I would be scared. Uh, either either on one end or the other. you got to have both things going on. You're known, loved, and served in a gritty, messy, painful reality of the local context. And his sto her story there at the end of the one gentleman... Uh, that was a great story. The, 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 the gentleman with a limp who she didn't quite get until she saw how he reacted to a little child. And then she goes, you know what? We're all that man with a limp. Uh, we're, all that, we're all that man with a limp and, and realizing that by the grace of God we are joined together and... and um, God can use us in an effective way. Any other comments uh, to close with? I just want to share something about the the upcoming Lenten series. Anybody else on this? Well, what you what you mentioned about people coming in with mud on his feet, the first thing it brought to mind was maybe it's time we do a little feet washing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, as far as the books go, I, I know uh, like Peggy and Lisa and Jenny, I know you guys have been in and out. Um, communicate with me how, how best, you know, send me an email or send me a text. Uh, give me a phone call. Uh, and I'm, I'm not going to be in the office this week, uh, but uh, I somehow communicate what would be the best way to get the books to you uh, for those of you that are not in person worship. Um, that, that way we can, because we don't start for a few, it's, it's about a month from now. We don't, so we got time to do it. But please communicate with me how, what would be the best, uh, and, and safest way for me to, to get those books into your hands. I can leave them in your mailbox and you can pick them up at church, uh, leave them in the church office, uh, deliver them to you. Uh, I will do whatever you, you feel is, is, is uh, best and safest for you, but but just communicate that with me, okay? And again, uh, one book is ten dollars. If you if you're getting two, it's fifteen. Any questions, Mel? Uh, just a check to all saints for the book. Please, please, in the memo section, write uh, Linton book. Okay. Make make sure make sure make sure you in the memo you put it so we we get it designated in the right spot. Okay. Yep. Yep. And 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 yes, please please make a separate. Uh, those of you that have counted, please make a separate check for it. Exactly. <laughs> don't include it. Don't include it all in one lump sum and say, okay, this much is my offering. This is for the book. This is for the. Yeah, Lisa knows that. That's a nightmare. That's a nightmare for the counters. Make it a separate check. <laughs> and if you do cash, do if you do cash, please put it in an envelope and on the outside of the envelope, put your name and put what it's for. Um, that way, that way it gets properly noted. Okay, let's close with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We thank you for the the opportunities where we have call and response, where we get to join together as the body of Christ, uh, proclaiming that which the body of Christ did for us. Uh, as, as we see each other in his wounds, let us be able to see each other as being ones who have been reconciled that we walk along with in ministry. Now, Heavenly Father, uh, let us find those ways in which we can serve you, uh, proclaiming your name to all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I will send out a note next week, an email, to let you know if I've got good Wi-Fi or not. So uh, I'll send it out usually on Thursday like I normally do. So you guys have a, a great week, a great weekend, and hopefully I'll see some of you in worship, and some of you will see me in worship on Sunday. Take care. Enjoy your week off. Will do. Will do.